Hey guys, good morning. We're on our way to the White House where the Speaker of the House is about to arrive with the Leader of the Senate. Uh, however, we got a motorcade. The Vice President will be attending this. Secret Service has just closed the roads near the White House to get everything clear and I can hear the sirens in the background. Let's get set up for this. Okay, so the Vice President has arrived. We're still waiting for the Speaker. I don't know if I can get in um, before he gets there. I'm probably on a sort of mini lockdown. Whenever motorcades arrive, it's difficult. Uh, let's go see what we can do. I didn't even notice this. So you see this uh, DC police cruiser and the one behind. There's two Suburbans in the middle. And that is a diplomatic motorcade. Some foreign head of state, probably not a head of state, but like a finance director or something like that is in town no flag so we can't really tell who it is but i know a guy who knows a guy we can ask them okay change of plans you see last night there was a fire call i took my press credentials out and threw them in my other coat as we went out to that fire i need my press credentials to get into the white house they're back at home in my other coat all right so we're going to run home get those then we'll come back okay it looks like the press has already gathered for this which would be like a five minute photo. There is a huge fire in Northwest right now that I'm missing to bring you this coverage. I'd rather be at the fire, but well, I get money for this. Once because we, we would in all likelihood lose the war. NATO would be fractured at best. Allies would turn away from the United States and the boldest leaders, the boldest autocrats of the world the Putins, the Xi's, the presidents of North, Car uh, North, Car North <laughs> Korea. I like the governor of North Carolina, actually. <laughs> uh, the presidents of uh, North Korea and Iran would be emboldened, thinking that the United States was this soft, fat uh, country that lost its way and would take advantage. Let Overwhelming sentiment in the media is we've got to do Ukraine now. There are other issues, including borders, we should address the conflict. And there was a discussion in the room that could you do border just by um, uh, administrative action? I think Biden won that argument because he said you can't do it. We all said without personnel, and you need legislation for personnel. for staying. We had a, uh, a, a couple of meetings there. It was uh, frank and honest. I think we need more frank and honest conversations on Capitol Hill. So I was happy to participate in this. We did uh, that as a group. And then I had a one-on-one uh, -on -one for a period of time with the president, just he and I in the Oval Office. Uh, let me say this. When I showed up today, my purpose was to express what I believe is the obvious truth. And that is that we must take care of America's needs first. When you talk about America's needs, you have to talk first about our open border. I've been, I believe, in uh, maybe 20-something states over the last several weeks, going around the country, uh, appearing at events with my colleagues, and we're hearing from the American people of all parties and all persuasions and all cities and all states who feel this acutely. They understand the catastrophe at the border is affecting everyone. And it is top of mind for all the American people for that reason. So I brought that issue up repeatedly today in that room and, and again one-on-one -on -one with the president. I think that's our responsibility uh, to bring that up. The other big priority for our country, of course, is the funding of our government. 
And we have been working in good faith around the clock every single day for months and, and weeks and over the last several days, quite literally around the clock, to get that job done. We're very optimistic. I, I hope that the other leaders came out here and told you the same. We believe that we can get to agreement on these issues and prevent a government shutdown, and that's our first uh, responsibility. Uh, you also heard, I'm sure, that there was um, discussion about the supplemental uh, spending package. And uh, I was very clear with the president and all those in the room that the House is actively uh, pursuing and uh, investigating all the various options on that, and we will address that in a timely manner. But again, the first priority of the country is our border and making sure it's secure. I, I believe the president can take executive authority right now today to change that, and I told him that again today in person, as, I, as I've said to him many times, publicly and privately over the last several weeks. It's time for action. It is a catastrophe, and it must stop. And we will get the government funded, and we'll keep working on that. So we'll have more for you. Speaker, 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 Okay, it's marine door practice. They take their covers off when they're practicing or not doing something official. That's why they have no covers, but you can see them all working, preparing for arrival ceremonies and stuff. Okay, so we're done here. Uh, to bring you that coverage, I had to miss a fire, a two-alarm fire up in Northwest. A couple people injured. We might go up there and see what's left, but it's about 15, 20 minutes away. Probably should have just gone to the fire. But the assignment was get pictures of Senator Speaker Johnson. So I got it. Oh, I got a closure. No, oh, the VP's coming out. This would be odd. She's supposed to be having lunch. And that was, oh, maybe the Speaker's coming out. Let's check it out. We got a big old bunch of motorcades around. So these are all the chauffeurs getting wanded by Secret Service. I don't even know what's going on today. Wanded by Secret Service. I don't even know what's going on today. Hey guys, DC has another fire. There's two working fires in one day. This one is on the other side of Capitol Hill. On a normal day, it would take me about 20 minutes to get there, but it's kind of raining out, and when rain comes, people have accidents. And now it would take literally 42 minutes to cross the city. We're not going, sorry. Here's the Four Seasons Hotel, and you see a tour bus. Then you see a bunch of people behind a fence line. That's because this is where basketball players stay. NBA, that's actually, oh, it looks like Stephen Curry is in town. Uh, what are the, the Golden State Warriors or whatever they're called. All the kids had Curry jerseys out there getting autographed. So those are Coast Guard patrol boats in the Potomac. Every now and then they uh, do high-speed chase drills, which are kind of cool. Let's see if they do that now. I don't know what they're up to. Oh, they're towing the other guy. Maybe they're just doing towing drills. There goes one of the patrol boats. I guess it was just a towing drill. Let's see if the other one chases them. No, not a chase drill. Okay, guys, so yeah, it's a pretty boring day. I missed the fires, but I am making my kids lasagna. They should enjoy it, I hope. Anyway, I'll be back tomorrow. Hunter Biden up on Capitol Hill. I'll be there to show you that. And Maybe we'll actually go to a fire tomorrow. All right, thanks a lot for watching. See you tomorrow.